Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 126. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So we know that Jeffrey Epstein had his tentacles wrapped in just about every bit of upper crust New York society, especially. And we know that he had ties to Peggy Siegel. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And we know that she said that they did favors for each other. Well, there's a report tonight coming out from the Daily Mail about a young Eastern European girl that Jeffrey Epstein sent over to Peggy Siegel, who Peggy Siegel then hired as an intern. And we know that Peggy Siegel said that her and Epstein were not that close. They they weren't that friendly. And, you know, she was trying to deny that they had close ties in that Vanity Fair article that she was uh, quoted in. And then she, of course, had to say that what was happening to her over the questions that were being asked of her about her ties to Epstein, well, she equated that to what Holocaust victims went through. So you see what sort of person we're dealing with here right away. I mean, talk about nonsense. Look, you're being asked questions, okay, lady? Because you were palling around with somebody like Jeffrey Epstein. You were enabling Jeffrey Epstein. You were taking young girls that he was sending over to you and putting them in as interns in your company. And let's be real. You did, don't, to act like you did not know Peggy Siegel, what was going on, who Jeffrey Epstein was, and what he was doing with these young girls, especially from places like Eastern Europe, it, it's very disingenuous for you to try and go that route. And I think this article is going to give us even more context and even more meat on the bone. And we all know around these parts that I'm a stickler for context. And whenever we can add something to a story that we've read previously, I love to do that. So we're going to read this article from the Daily Mail and uh, we'll see what they have to say. The headline is exclusive. How Jeffrey Epstein pulled strings for his 20-something lady friend to intern for a Hollywood's queen of publicity, ultimately leading to her fall from grace because of her ties to the dead pedophile. Man, just imagine that your name was attached to that, uh, the headline across the world, that, you, you know, your fall from grace is because of your ties to a dead pedophile. Talk about reevaluating your life choices. Don't you think that would be a time where you'd take a look in the mirror and have a hard, a nice hard look at yourself and say, man, what the blazes am I doing hanging out with people like Jeffrey Epstein? And then from there, try and atone for your sins? No, these people just dig in and they go even deeper into their, their cone of nonsense well, oh, I didn't really know him. Oh, well, we only hung out once or twice when there's overwhelming evidence to the contrary. All right. A 20-something-year-old... Oh, excuse me. Before we get into the article, let's see. Who wrote it? Uh, Luis Boyle in New York for the DailyMail.com. All right. So let's see. A 20-something woman who was among Jeffrey Epstein's group of young females worked for Hollywood's queen of publicity with links to the multimillionaire pervert DailyMail.com has learned. Salacious. What a way to open the story, huh? If that doesn't grab your attention. Peggy Siegel, 72, once commanded the attention of studio heads, New York literati, and A-list stars like Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio, and George Clooney at her lavish events. Well, why wouldn't she be hanging out with people like that? She was a publicist, right? Well, those same people were palling around in the same circles as Epstein. Maybe not those same exact people, but those kind of people, right? The Hollywood elite, the media moguls, the business powerhouses, all of these people were all palling around with Epstein and I'm, I'm sure with, uh, with Peggy Siegel as well. And for Siegel to act like she didn't even know who Jeffrey Epstein was or they weren't close, it's just, it's just ridiculous, folks. And I, honestly, I know I certainly don't believe anything any of these people say at this point. And I highly doubt anyone out there listening to this podcast especially believes them. From the emails I get, forget it. And Epstein's 20-something-year-old companion, Julia Stepanova, spent months working for the public relations powerhouse as an intern, sources tell DailyMail.com. 
Now Siegel has become a professional pariah because of her association with the deceased pedophile. She denies that they had a close friendship. Yeah, close enough that Stepanova was sent over to her powerhouse publicity company and she was brought right in and was working as a... Uh, as an intern, I'm sure that's not an easy gig to get into, folks, right? Publicity, one of these marketing jobs, this is big money we're talking about here. You don't just fall into one of these jobs. It's all about nepotism. And, Step uh, and Stepanova has all but disappeared from public view. So when you uh, read the article, and I hope you'll do that, make sure you click on the link and follow the article, you'll see pictures, and it shows pictures of uh, Stepanova and uh picture there's a picture here with uh Epstein with this uh disgusting look on his face wearing a pair of sweatpants that say Zorro on them. Oh, this guy's sick. And uh a pair of slippers and he's hugging this young lady and he has his hand placed firmly on her bottom. And he has the smile on his face like F you. And I, it's just, I have to be honest with you folks, it's one of the most punchable faces I've ever seen in my life. I honestly wish we could revive this man and I could just punch him in his face repeatedly because it, 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 he has one of those faces, just an absolute punchable mug. Stepanova worked in the Manhattan office of Siegel's boutique firm where the PR veteran routinely employed young women to send invites to Hollywood stars from her infamous list of 30,000 contacts and organize her meticulously choreographed plush events. It is unclear how Stepanova, who was photographed at occasional society events, actually landed a job with Siegel, a position coveted by ambitious college graduates trying to break into the Hollywood machine and who have subsequently gone on to run their own agencies or take high-powered positions elsewhere in the industry. That's what I was just saying a second ago, folks. This is a highly competitive field, okay? This isn't the sort of field where just Joe Schmo gets a gig, walks in, and now has themselves access to a Rolodex of 30,000 contacts. That doesn't just happen. This is a, a, very, a very competitive business and a business filled with nepotism and a business filled with do what I want or you're gone. And when there's that sort of pressure, there's not much people won't do to chase their dreams, folks. But it is co coincidental that a friend of Epstein worked for Siegel, who has herself uh, admitted that she has exchanged favors with the financier, pedophile. She arranged the 2010 dinner honoring Prince Andrew at Epstein's home and added him to the guest list for a few of her movie screening parties from 2010 until 2016. And remember, at that, at that uh, party for Andrew, we had Woody Allen, we had Katie Couric, we had George Stepanopoulos. It was a who's who of uh, seedy scumbags that were hanging out with this dude. In the interview with Vanity Fair published last month, Siegel, 72, tried to distance herself from Epstein, 66, who killed himself in a Manhattan jail cell in August, allegedly, while facing federal child sex trafficking charges. One source told DailyMail.com, I believe that karma is, is the driving force behind Peggy's downfall after grossly mistreating so many people for so many years, especially the impressionable young women and men that work for her. And we see this. This is a common theme with these people, folks. We've seen this with Eileen Guggenheim and the way she, she treated uh, Maria Farmer and the way that these art people treat these girls. And we see it also, especially in in this this part of society the upper crust new york part of society these people look at that at us no different than some oil sheik over in in uh, saudi arabia looks at the the hired help that they bring in from in, in, insert third world country here that's the way these people look at all of us there were were nothing to them were servants and they just they'll treat you as such Siegel told Vanity Fair that she was aware that Epstein had spent time in jail, but could not recall if she knew he pleaded guilty to soliciting sex with a minor in 2008 in Florida. Oh, what a bunch of 
BS. I mean, really? You don't have the internet? You don't have an army of people at your service to do uh, research if you need them to? Please, there is no excuse for people to say they had no idea who Epstein was, what he was doing, or what he was accused of. Just, just stop it, alright? Save it. I mean, I knew him, but I didn't know how I didn't know much about him. Yeah, I spoke to him on the phone. He came to some screenings. I was never privy to his private life. I knew nothing about the girls, nothing at all. Nah, all those girls that Epstein was hanging out with all the time, Peggy Siegel, when you were hanging out with him, there was nothing weird about that, right? Nothing weird about a bunch of young looking girls hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. You know they weren't his nieces. You know they weren't his daughter's friends. So who were they, Peggy Siegel? The PR maven, oh, th- that's rich, how about the Jeffrey Epstein enabler, said that she was, she was not paid by Epstein, nor had a contract with him, and backtracked on an earlier statement that she made to the Hollywood Reporter, which said that the financier would fund her travel expenses. Financier, huh? The pedophile. And please, I'm sure Jeffrey Epstein was funding plenty, plenty of your travel expenses, Miss Siegel. Or what, you're throwing these parties for him for free? No, it was a quid pro quo relationship, just like the rest of you, a symbiotic relationship between parasites. That's what all of you are. You're all parasites, in my opinion. Siegel has not been accused of any connection to Epstein's criminal acts, not just enabling him. That's no big deal about that, right? She had previously suffered a blow to her business after losing a lucrative job with the Weinstein Company when it was shuttered after allegations of rape and sexual assault were made against its founder, Harvey Weinstein, who is currently on trial in New York. And do you think it's a coincidence, folks, that all of these people have Weinstein as a friend in common? You don't think Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein were thick as thieves? You don't think that these guys were sitting around having drinks at these stupid social mixers, laughing at the expense of their victims? They were. There are those kind of scumbags, all right? They're the kind of scumbags. It's like serial killers. They have to take a little something, a totem from their victims. And that's what these idiots would do, I bet. They'd get around together and they'd yuck it up, boys and girls. They would yuck it up at the expense of these survivors and at the expense of the rest of us because they're able to get away with it. And they think we're so stupid. And they think that they can just do whatever they want, even traffic women and young girls. A Siegel insider confirmed that Stepanova worked in the publicist's New York office, saying that her accent was Eastern European and that she was believed to be from Ukraine. Does that shock anybody? All right, and forget about what you've heard about Ukraine in the media lately. That's all a bunch of just political theater, okay? All of it from both sides. Political theater, like WWE. Now, Ukraine, though if we're being honest about the the country itself, is poverty-stricken, folks, all right? Ukraine has a serious problem with their economy. There's a lot of people out of work. You know, there's a lot of issues with human trafficking through through uh, Ukraine. So it's an easy, fertile ground for somebody who's flashing some dough like Epstein to walk into and basically cultivate young girls and women who come from disadvantaged backgrounds and bring them to America on on a bunch of promises built on uh, a, a foundation of quicksand. And then they get over here and, you know, they might get a couple of dollars, nothing, nothing, you know, not even enough to survive in some cases. There was four or five of these girls in each apartment. But they come over here with these promises and then instead what they get is they get abused by Jeffrey Epstein. It was just such a sick, sick situation going on for so long and for so many people in power to act like they had no idea. It's just, it's beyond the pale. Another source told DailyMail.com Okay, we did that one. All right, excuse me. Siegel told Vanity Fair that she didn't always know the names of employees, but sources said that no one would have been hired without her knowledge. Come on. All right. Someone like Peggy Siegel is a control freak. We all know that. Look, they all share this characteristic. All of these people are power hungry in their own in their own way. Right. Each one of them might be, you know, powerful in their own their own um, their own situation. Right. Like Jeffrey Epstein was powerful in the world of Jeffrey Epstein and in Peggy Siegel's world. Well, she's the one that wields the power. And that's how all of these folks were and then you'd get them together and they'd be you know in a big group and then there'd be the pecking order of the who's who the elite of the elite right 
And, you know, when you're when you're that power hungry, there's no way that you're hiring somebody to your public relations company that you did not uh, OK yourself. Unless, of course, it's nepotism and that person has been sent over. In an email, Siegel's attorney, Bert Fields, told DailyMail.com, my information is that Miss Stepanova was an intern who was briefly with the company. Peggy does not hire the interns and does not recall who recommended Miss Stepanova. Stepanova, excuse me, Stepanova was known to be among a tight-knit group of women who socialized and traveled with Epstein following his release from Florida prison in 2010 after he was convicted for soliciting a minor for prostitution. Again, a minor for prostitution. What a dumbass law that is. How can you solicit a minor to be a, for, for a prostitution when they can't even consent? It's just so ridiculous that that was even ever a law in the books. In December 2015, uh, Stepanova was pictured with Epstein at his Upper East Side townhouse where he is seen embracing her with his hands on her bottom. Casually dressed and holding a glass of water, she then re-entered Epstein's home. She was also seen emerging from Epstein's residence several months later in February of 2016. The previous year in May 2015, Stepanova was pictured deep in conversation with Epstein while walking on Madison Avenue close to his East 71st Street townhouse. Stepanova went by the name Julia S. Cuomo on her Facebook page where her profile picture showed her in, glam in a glamorous blue dress at a society event. Julia S. Cuomo? Oh my lord, okay. Her picture was also taken by veteran society photographer Patrick McMullen on the New York It Girl circuit. In the shots, she poses alongside others in Epstein's inner circle, Russian model Sv Svetlana Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy this last name. Posa Diva. Svetlana Posa Diva and Chef Jennifer Kalin at the New York Academy of Arts Tribeca Ball in April 2014. And now let's recall, folks, the New York Academy of Art. Well, that is where Eileen Guggenheim was, a, was basically provided Maria Farmer to Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell for them to do what they did to her. And so let's never forget that the, the role that the New York Academy of Art has played in this whole entire thing since basically the beginning. Siegel was photographed at the same event. In another social media photo, Stepanova pouts alongside Posadiva in the back of an SUV. Posadiva goes by Lana, was at one time represented by MC2 Model Management, an agency founded by Epstein's friend Jean-Luc Brunel with a reported $1 million investment from the financier. Pedophile. And again, folks, you see all the different layers, right? We, you know, if you've been following this story from the beginning, you understand who all the players are in this story, right? But if you have not followed this story from the beginning and say you're just jumping into it right now, can you imagine how overwhelming all of this information would be? Because there are so many layers to this case and so many people who were involved in one way or another, and uh, some were in more, uh, you know, more significant degrees than others, right? But all of these people that were, we talk about, all of these people like Peggy Siegel and everybody who enabled Jeffrey Epstein on down to people like Len Dubin and Prince Andrew who are being credibly accused by Virginia Roberts. And you have your, what we have here, folks, is something we've never seen before. When the, when the lid really gets blown off of this whole entire thing, it's going to wake a whole lot of people up because guess what, folks? This is a whole lot of rot at the very top, at the upper crust of society, folks. Brunel, who was last located in South America, according to La pa uh, Parisi Parisian, has been accused of supplying underage girls to Epstein and assaulting models. He has denied the charges. It is unclear where Stepanova's career progressed following her stint at the Peggy Siegel Company. Her Facebook page has been made private, with the name changed to Julio Como now. The original spelling was C-U-O-M-O, -O, like, you know, uh, like Cuomo that's on TV or the mayor. And now it's C-O-M-O. -O. And the picture removed, but her location is still listed as New York. She has no LinkedIn profile or other evident social media. Attempts to reach Stepanova by DailyMail.com were unsuccessful. Look, here's where this Stepanova chick doesn't look like she was... 
Um, she wasn't involved, it looks like, in procuring any girls or anything for Jeffrey Epstein. If, if in my opinion, if anything, this 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 lady was probably was probably a, another victim of Jeffrey Epstein. And I don't know if the Daily, if Daily Mail or the other newspaper should really like be hounding her or whatever, or maybe they should just reach out to her and let her tell her story instead of, you know, breaking her chops. Because if she was a, a victim of Jeffrey Epstein, and remember, she's from a different culture, a different country, maybe she feels like she, she doesn't have the ability to come forward and say so, who knows? But maybe some of these uh, media outlets should reach out and let her tell her story and then go from there. So, I don't know. That's, that's just how I feel about that kind of stuff. Siegel has been at the pinnacle of New York society since the 80s, organizing intimate, exclusive movie screenings and events on the competitive Oscar campaign circuit, where she intermingled with powerful figures from the showbiz, business, political, and media worlds. Doesn't that just fit in perf- perfectly with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, folks? Showbiz, check. Business, check. Political, check. Media worlds, check. The most powerful, powerful areas of, of uh, you know, branching out and making friends. And in Epstein and Maxwell's case, blackmail. But you would see why they'd want to have someone like Peggy Siegel around that could open these doors for them, right? It's all one big, gigantic-ass criminal conspiracy. It's unbelievable to me that this has not been slapped with RICO charges yet. There is barely an A-lister she has not been pictured schmoozing with. De Niro and director David O. Russell at a lunch for the movie Joy at La, uh, at La Granu, or I don't know, some French word. Front row at New York Fashion Week with Hilary Swank on the red carpet with Emma Stone, Andrew Garfield, Colin Firth, Anna Wintour, and Woody Allen at her company's premiere for the director's movie Magic in the Moonlight. She has boasted a direct line to studio bosses, hitched rides on private jets, and vacationed on the super yachts of wealthy friends in the south of France and the Caribbean. Sounds like the perfect person for Epstein and Maxwell to be hanging around with, huh? Epstein, 66, hanged himself, allegedly, in his New York jail cell on August 10th while facing federal child sex trafficking charges. The financier pedophile, was arrested at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey on July 6th when his private jet touched down from Paris. On the same day, investigators found hundreds of sexually suggestive photos locked in a safe at his Upper East Side home of nude or partially nude young women and girls. Again, folks, why was the ranch in New Mexico not raided? And that's the main reason I'm going there, okay? That's the main reason I, I'm going to New Mexico and, and to Santa Fe. I, I have some questions that can only be answered by the locals. And unfortunately, I don't trust the news media to do it for me anymore. I don't trust the legacy media to ask the right questions and shake the right trees. So I'm forced to go down there so we can get, you know, the a, a bird's eye view of what is exactly going on. Because why would all of these other places be raided and not the Zorro Ranch? It's just, it's mind boggling to me. Days after Epstein's arrest, the New York Times ran an article titled, Jeffrey Epstein was a sex offender. The powerful welcomed him anyway. Well, that's all fine and well by the New York Times, but that would have been, uh, you know, worked out a lot better uh, years ago, decades ago even. In the article, Siegel, along with Dr. Eva Anderson Dubin, founder of a breast cancer center at Mount Sinai Hospital and wife of billionaire hedge funder Glenn Dubin, were described as Epstein's powerful female friends and social guarantors. Siegel told the Times in July, he said he'd served his time and assured me that he'd changed his ways. Look, we're not talking about somebody that was illegally trading stocks. We're not talking about somebody who, you know, embezzled some money from the partners at the law firm, okay? We're talking about somebody who was trafficking young girls and women and was sexually assaulting them. So because he assured you that he changed his ways, you let him back into your circle and you gave him credibility and you were a conduit for him to gain that credibility again? Yeah, that's a really good idea, Peggy Siegel. You sure are a real smart woman. Epstein also socialized with Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Sergey Brin, and Prince Andrew following his 2008 conviction according to The Edge. Let me read those names again for you folks so you know who the scumbags really are. 
Okay? I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. Before Epstein was convicted, you at the very least can make the argument that, oh, I had no idea what he was or what he was doing. You can make the argument. Well, does anybody believe you? Doubtful. But you can at least make the argument, okay? If you try and make the argument that you had no idea who he was after the conviction, you, my friend, are an absolute moron. Following his release from jail and return to New York in 2010, Epstein attended Siegel's screening of Wall Street Money Never Sleeps, where he mingled with guests including Trump's now Treasury Secretary Steve Munchen, Trump's now Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, and Trump's personal attorney Rudy Giuliani. Siegel organized the December 2010 dinner at Epstein's home in honor of Prince Andrew, who was staying at the financier pedophile townhouse. The Duke of York stay at Epstein house at Epstein's house after the financier pedophile was released from jail as a registered sex offender has been widely criticized and led to his step down from public duties for the royal family. Look, guys, come on. If you're the Prince of England, do you really think you need to stay at Jeffrey Epstein's house, especially after he's been convicted of what he was convicted of? You said you're flying over there to break up with him, Prince. Why would you stay in his house after breaking up with him? Why wouldn't you just call and get a whole floor at the Waldorf, Waldorf Astoria? It's on the dime of the taxpayers of England anyway. You might as well splurge, pal. Siegel arranged for dinner guests to include journalist Katie Couric, Charlie Rose, George Stepanopoulos, comedian Chelsea Handler, director Woody Allen, and his wife Sunyi Previn. Epstein was still being invited to Siegel's events in March 2016 when he was a guest at the premiere of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice in New York. You know, New York could really use someone like Batman to show up, huh, and clean them all out. Wouldn't that be nice? He shows up at one of these stupid billionaire balls and gives them all the business. Because let's be real, all of these people seem like they were involved in this criminal, criminal conspiracy. You slap a RICO charge on these people and let me tell you what, you'd be shocked with how many of them will get wrapped up in it. Because anyone who accepted money, well, now they're part of the conspiracy for any reason. So it'll be up to them to prove that <laughs> that, that money wasn't ill-gotten uh, funds. And I'll tell you what, I, it'll be, I bet you it'll be hard for a lot of them to prove it. The publicist also lamented the demise of her career due to her Epstein connection. She told Vanity Fair that she only had one paid job in the last year. FX, Annapurna, and Netflix have all declined to work with her. Aw, poor Peggy Siegel. Can you imagine? Poor Peggy can't work anymore. Nobody wants to work with somebody that was hanging out with a sex offender, with a child trafficker. Oh, I mean, the, the, the shock. I mean, consider uh, the shock of it all. Listen, Peggy Siegel, how do you think the survivors feel? How do you think the girls feel? The girls that were abused by Epstein. Epstein that you enabled, by the way. The same Epstein that you acted as a vehicle for to drive his ass right back into society and get himself some credibility. How do you think they feel, Peggy Siegel? Because guess what? At this point, I don't care how you feel. I don't care about any of you people, any of you enablers, anyone that was around Epstein, anybody that could have whistled, blew, blown the whistle, anybody who, who could have rang the bells and who didn't, F you. At one point, Siegel compared her problems to the Holocaust. I mean, if I had been in Nazi Germany, it could not have been worse. I thought, oh my god, I'm on the train station, I'm getting on that train, and I'm going to the camps, she said. She later apologized on page 6 for making those remarks. You think that she should have apologized for that? How, how demeaning to the people that actually got on those trains. How demeaning for the people that actually suffered through the Holocaust. This lady thinks that that's a good comparison. Again, it just shows you the decision-making of these so-called elites, folks. These people are all sick, and they, they all, maybe they all have CTE. She later apologized on page 6 for making those remarks. An ex-employee characterized the Vanity Fair article as entirely accurate, saying that her character is in that piece. Wow. Look, we all know what Peggy Siegel is at this point. We have enough information to know that she was an enabler of Jeffrey Epstein. We all know that she she knew a lot more than she's saying, all right? And how can you ever prove that? Obviously, you can't. But 
at this point, anyone who was around Epstein this much, anyone who was coming to his mansion and seeing the weird ass art, the weird ass chess piece, the board, the chess board, the, the young girls running around, the massage tables everywhere. Nobody's going to your house, uh, uh, townhouse in New York and getting a massage, bro. That's weird. All right. Take your buddies to the actual massage place and get massages. You have all the money in the world. Why do you have 13, 14 year old girls coming over to massage you and your buddy Dershowitz as you guys hang out in your towels? But I mean, it's all good, though, right? Because Alan Dershowitz kept his underwear on. So we're good. I mean, as long as you keep your draws on, you're all good. You're tidy whities What a sick and depraved son of a bitch that is as well, huh? In my opinion, boy, let me tell you what, Dershowitz is as bad as anyone in this case, okay? Just a sick, sick man. All right, everybody. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. If you would like to help support the podcast, you can do that by clicking on the GoFundMe link inside of the description box. We are almost, actually more than halfway to our goal. And that's all because of your generosity, folks. And I thank you very, very much for that. All right, everybody, I will be back tomorrow morning with a morning update and your usual daily drop. And if anything cracks off in the afternoon, I'll be reporting that as well. So enjoy your Friday night, everybody. If you're going out and partying, please do not drink and drive. And everybody, please be safe. I will talk to everybody in the morning.